morning, my beautiful internet friends, and welcome back. Please welcome Harry the Cat. He is an adorable Christmas mug that is one of my absolute favorites. Today, I wanted to share with you guys a realization I had that has kind of been blowing my mind a little bit over the past few days because I don't know if you've ever felt this way, but there have been moments that have lasted way longer than I would like them to in my life. Sometimes, though this might sound dramatic, I feel like I've lost the ability to experience joy. And this is especially true when I'm dealing with heavy bouts of depression, but I feel like no matter what I do, no matter who I see or who I talk to or you know, however many things I do right, I just like lose the ability to feel good things. It feels like it's just been taken away, right? If you have ever felt that way, you're not alone. I'm right there with you. And what I'm about to talk about is not like a completely new or novel concept, but the way it was presented really changed my mind by this one particular piece. So here's what I'm talking about. In the world of like self-help, self-improvement, business development, all of that, oftentimes people will talk about the power of saying no to something, right? Like that's not a new concept. I recently went to a conference conference put on by Rachel Hollis in Dallas, Texas, where I, it was either her or another speaker named Jen Hatmaker who said that if the response to being asked to do something isn't like, hell yes, I'd love to do that, then it's a no. Speaking to the idea that you should really only do things you really feel strong emotion about or you'd really love to do, but then again, that's not always necessarily realistic for life, though I would like to move towards that. And I've, I've heard other people say the same thing, like someone I really admire and respect, Gary Vaynerchuk, who's an entrepreneur and a speaker and someone I think is pretty cool. He often talks about this idea of you learn to say no and learn to mean it. One of my favorite TED Talks of all time, and I'm, I'm a big TED Talk nerd, and guys, one day, I promise you, you will see me on a TED Talk stage. That's like, that's a stepping stone of my dream. I don't know what, I don't know what's after that. Maybe talking to Oprah, I don't know, maybe that'd be a cool thing too, but giving a TED Talk is like top of my list, but my favorite one, I believe the title is The Life-Changing Magic of Not Giving a, sorry for the adult language, a fuck. And Sarah Knight, the speaker, talks about how important it is to say no if you don't want to do something. See, my method, is all about not giving a fuck using honesty and politeness. Step one, decide what annoys you. Non-essential stuff you don't care about. Step two, stop giving your fucks in the form of time, energy, and money to those things. Again, such a simple concept, but I was listening to this podcast. I was listening to Vanessa Van Edwards speaking and she mentioned apathy. How if we say yes to things that we're apathetic about, we start reinforcing this idea to ourselves that we can't really feel joy. And something just clicked for me. I was like, I have been doing that to myself for years. And here's what I mean. Like if I have been invited to go do something with a group of people and I'm like, you know what? They're people I care about. I should want to do this. I don't actually feel anything about it. I don't actually want to do it. It's not like a hell yeah, I want to do that. It's just like a, I, I should. There's a lot of shoulds in my life that I'm working to break. If I go and do that thing, I might be around people who are having a great time, but I'm not. I, I don't really want to be there, I just want to be home. And that might make wherever I am with my mental health a little bit worse because I feel weird, I feel different for like not being able to like feel the same things that other people seem to be feeling. And I think what's interesting about this concept is I judge my interaction, I judge my mood, going to things I never really wanted to go do as if I wanted to be there. So if I'm not experiencing joy and like feeling uplifted and feeling like full of life, I'm like, what's wrong with you? You know, I'm reinforcing this idea to my myself that I can't ever really enjoy myself. I can't ever really have a good time. Like I'm never really gonna be happy. I'm never really gonna be okay. But I'm doing things that I never really wanted to do in the first place either. I know I've said this already, but I, I'm, I'm quite literally reinforcing this belief that I cannot enjoy life because I continue to say yes to things. Not that I maybe even actively don't wanna do, but just that I'm kinda like, eh, eh. Too, just kind of like apathetic. I've been working on saying no to things in my life that I don't want to do. There's a lot of social pressure and responsibility and things that we feel like we should do and I've been trying to piece those things apart in my life and actually only engage in things I want to engage in. But what really hit me was so often I, I go along with things that I'm just fine with because other people want it or because it seems like a good idea or whatever and then depression deepens or I feel a 
lot sadder or I just feel more dead because I was apathetic about it in the first place. And that dissonance, I think is the right word. Like when you, when you feel like you should be feeling something but you're not feeling it and there's this like disconnect, it makes things so much worse. It makes me feel weird and different and broken and like, ah, oh, you know, and then that, that just makes the feelings I'm feeling already worse. And so it's this weird spiral where I am unintentionally continuing to tell myself and show myself, see, you can't ever really enjoy life. You can't ever really have fun. And the thing is, that's, like, that's not true with things that I really love. What making a change in my life to start telling myself I actually can enjoy life more might look like is starting to say no to things that I'm just apathetic about, not only things I don't want to do. Because that's something we hear all the time. We hear, you know, say no to things you don't want to do, which is really important. But maybe we should also kindly, respectfully say, no, I'm not interested, but thanks for thinking of me to things that we just, aren't really thrilled about either. It's this concept that's just been really blowing my mind lately. And I think this is gonna look different for everybody. And for me, it's important to start noticing those things because otherwise all I notice is all the moments where I can't feel things, all the moments where I feel like I'm so disconnected from everybody around me, all the moments where I just feel weird and wrong and like you'll never really experience joy, you'll never really have fun or feel engaged or feel like you're here. Cause those, those statements are not true, but they start to feel it when I keep feeding myself things that reinforce those beliefs. At this point, you might be thinking, Joe, that sounds really great in theory, but this is the real world and my actions have real consequences and I totally understand that. And so a couple things that help me deal with this idea and how I might actually play it out in my real life are these. First off, not to say yes in the first place, I find it really easy in the moment to be like, yeah, yeah, that sounds great, I'll totally be there. And internally be like, I don't, I just don't want to though. It's easy to do that and a good line that I heard in that speech, the life-changing magic of not giving a fuck is, no, I'm not gonna be able to make it, but thank you so much for thinking of me. That way you are running a very low risk of offending someone, you are thanking them for thinking of you, you're showing gratitude, but you're also saying like, hey, I'm not gonna be able to be there and you don't have to justify it any further than that. There was a situation earlier this week, right after I listened to this video, where I was like, I know for a fact, I don't want to go do something that I had said that I would go do, that I, I was gonna see people and be committed to, and my mental health is not in a super great state right now. And I knew that if I went, at a minimum, I'd be apathetic about it, but more likely I would probably, it would probably exacerbate the feelings I was already having and the depression and the darkness. And so I talked to my counselor about this and I made the decision to back out, to say, I, again, I really appreciate you guys wanting me to be there, but mentally I'm not in a place and I'm truly sorry for any inconvenience it causes and absolutely saying no to things runs the risk of frustrating people or fill in the blank but I think it's important to prioritize what's actually important and if you're starting to believe that you can never really enjoy things in life if you are completely overwhelmed if you are very very stressed if it's affecting your health if you're dealing with mental health issues reality is you have to prioritize what's important and sometimes that means that people might get frustrated though oftentimes if you're just honest with them up front that's not going to be the case which I have found out recently but it is so easy to just let that apathy win and just go along with things because we're supposed to do them or because other people want us to or whatever and not because we actually want to be there and I think that that at least for me personally sucks me into a dark hole even deeper especially when I'm kind of like on the edge of it anyways I am coming to terms with the reality that that's just not good for me and I need to change my behavior on that and I've tried it over the past couple days and so far it's it's been a really positive thing. It's really freeing to start making choices for yourself. So my question to you is, have you ever felt this way? Have you ever found yourself telling yourself or feeling like, you know what? I am just someone who isn't gonna be able to feel joy. I'm just like, that's just gone for me if it was ever there. If so, yeah, I've been there, I get it. And you're not alone. But I wonder if sometimes our actions play into that, if they feed it. Not that we want those things to be true, not that we're causing them, but that subconsciously we're sort of feeding into this belief that we can't ever have what we really want in life. Let me know if this was helpful and if it was clear. I would love, love, love to hear your thoughts and your comments in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, 
it would be an honor to me if you would hit subscribe. A huge thank you goes out to all my patrons over on Patreon. I love the community we have there. It's thriving, it's growing, and I'm really grateful for it. And for this YouTube community, I am crazy thankful and grateful. I can't believe how close we are to 100,000 subscribers. That's just insane. So thank you for being a part of that, truly. I love you guys, I'm thinking of you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Hand her from the sky.